Hi, in this tutorial, I will show you how to solve the advection diffusion mass transport equation for complex geometries in physics. Uh, with a, so we will be considering this equation and we will apply a flux boundary condition at the wall. We will use zero uh, concentration at the inlet and we wanna solve this equation uh, using find other method in physics. So in our paper, this paper here, which I'll provide a link in the description box, we talk about in detail about numerous challenges involved in solving these types of uh, <clears throat> convective transport problems, specifically in cardiovascular settings where we have very, very high Peckler number and Schmidt numbers. So, uh, so essentially, we, when we solve this equation, we usually need to run it for several, sometimes tens of cardiac cycles for the solutions to reach a quasi-state condition. And also, we need to have a very, very fine mesh near the wall to capture those very, very thin boundary layers. So in the code that I'll go over today, I do not follow those conditions because I wanted to get a quick solution. So I don't run for a very long time. And also I use the same CFD mesh as the for the mass transport equation. Whereas usually whenever we solve these equations, we always create another mesh for the mass transport equation, which is much finer near the wall compared to the CFD mesh. But here, I'm just going to be using the same mesh that I worked on in the previous tutorials to get in a format for Phoenix. Okay, great. So let's go over the code. This is the code we have here. Um, at the top here, I am reading uh, the files. So I'm reading the mesh, the boundary condition uh, tags, and also the uh, velocity, all in H5 file, which I created in the previous tutorials. You also have an option to read in XML. So with this flag, you can set uh, how you want to read uh, your mesh. And then here you define your output. So in this case, I'm solving for concentration. You would set pretty much everything up here in this code. So here you set the velocities that you have. So in this case, I have 50 velocities. These are the, the index for the velocities that are embedded in the H5 file. And then uh, I tell it how often to print the, some intermediate information to the screen. So in this case, the min and max concentration so I can track my solution, see if it's reaching steady state or really quasi steady state or it's diverging. This is how often you wanna save your solution. So how many time steps? This is the basis order. If you wanna use first order or second order, using second order often helps to get smoother results. But what we found in our paper is that it's more economic to go for first order and just refine that. But, but if you can't refine your mesh uh, uh, satisfactory, then I recommend you use a quadratic shape function here. So it's just set here to two. This is a diffusion coefficient. So typically in cardiovascular mass transport problems, the diffusion coefficient is centimeter squared per second is one in minus five, one in minus six, or one in minus seven. But in this case, I'm setting it to a pretty larger value, which is not really representative to biochemicals, but I'm doing that so I can you know, get away by solving this problem with the same mesh as the CFD mesh without uh, compromising accuracy too much in an efficient time. So I can get solutions faster for this demo demonstration purposes. And this is actually one way that people that solve these equations have overcome these challenges we talk about in our paper is that they just increase the diffusion coefficient so they can get an acceptable solution. But you know that's an okay approach as long as you only care about uh, qualitative patterns. So qualitatively, you'll get the same results. And I'll talk about at the end why it is. It has to do with the robust topological structures at the wall, which I'll talk about at the end of this tutorial. But then if you're in care, if you care about quantitative concentration patterns, this will completely change your solutions. You have to stick to the appropriate uh, diffusion coefficient. Okay, so here I'm specifying the flux. Here I'm specifying the starting time. How, how, how long I want to run this simulation. In this case, I'm running it for five cardiac cycle. It's, each cardiac cycle is 0.9 seconds in this case. And um, typically, from my experience, solving a, a thin boundary layers, it requires at least 10 cardiac cycles for it to reach some acceptable quasi state. And sometimes we've seen even way more than that. So this is the total number of time steps. And here you calculate, the code calculates your the time steps based on the time interval and the number of time steps. And this, T steps per file tells the code how many of 
in between every two velocity file that you're reading, how many mass transport time steps you have. Okay, great. So then down here we, uh, you know, read the file. So, uh, so you can see I'm defining something called D multiple, but I'm you know, setting the same diffusion coefficient. There. In a moment, I'll tell you why I had that originally in the code to have multiple diffusion coefficients, but I'm not using that really in this demo here. So then we uh, we move on. So we define our basis functions, trial functions, test functions, so pretty standard. We uh, read the boundary condition tags. We specify the boundary conditions. So in this case, I'm specifying the boundary conditions. The boundary conditions I have here for the traditional boundary condition is only zero concentration at the inlet. So one is tagged. If you remember from our demo, one was the inlet that we tagged. So the demo was based on this carotid artery model. So I'm using the same carotid artery model that we worked with in our previous demos to get it into a format for uh, in H5 files. So we'll be using the same model here. Um, so it's the same tags. One is inlet, so I'm setting zero concentration at the inlet. Now, there's some interesting facts about the outlet boundary condition. So if, if I'm not specifying any outlet boundary condition here, so in the big format, I also don't set anything for the outlet. So what that means is that I'm using the default boundary condition in find element, which is zero new line boundary condition or zero flux. Now, there is a challenge associated with zero flux boundary condition at the outlet, which is a trivial choice for transport problems. You know, you want to use zero flux at the outlet, but there's a challenge with that. And that is that if you have backflow at the outlets, which often happens in cardiovascular flows, in there in certain cases like arctic aneurysms, we typically in the infrarenal region, we have backflow. Or sometimes depending on where you're cropping your outlet, you might have a circulation or out or backflow. So in those cases, the code usually diverges once you get backflow. So you have two choices. So in this case, we didn't, I didn't have that issue in this carotid artery model. So it did, I didn't have that problem. So I just used the ideal boundary condition, zero flux at the outlet, um, which you don't have to do anything in fine elements. Just by default, a face will have zero flux or zero human. Um, uh, so then uh, there are two cases that if, if you have backflow, there are two things you can do. One is that, which is what we do in some of our work, is that you set zero Dirichlet, zero concentration at the outlet. And what you do is that you also make sure the outlet is far from the region of interest. So the thing is that that's not a problem because information in these convection dominated flows especially near the outlets, information doesn't really propagate backwards to the region of interest. And you know, the outlet, we're not really coupling it back. We don't have a closed loop model to couple the outlet to the inlet. So we don't really care about what goes on at there. So we can set zero Dirichlet there to kind of like get away with that. And, but the issue with zero Dirichlet at the outlet is that when your front of concentration propagates to the outlet, once it reaches, the, it suddenly has to jump to zero. So that creates like a sharp, you know, kind of like an interior boundary layer. So then uh, that is also problematic. So what you can do is that you can ramp up the diffusion coefficient at the outlet. And that's again, okay, because it's outside your region of interest. So you can damp the concentration once, as it reaches the outlet and then specify zero concentration. So, uh, so you can do that by defining multiple diffusion coefficients, but which I don't do in this uh, tutorial. Now, another better approach to overcome that is a more recent approach in, in this paper from Alberto Figueroa's group. So this paper, Sabrina uh, proposed a very nice approach to add a backflow stabilization term to the weak form for the outlet, which we also use in our, some of our later studies. And that's also another nice way to overcome backflow stabilization. So in the OASIS tutorial, I also talked about this very similar thing for backflow stabilization in cardiovascular, in, in fluid fluid, number of solution. And this is a kind of a similar idea in the context of addiction. Okay. Uh, now, so that's the boundary condition. So here we have our weak form, pretty standard. So we have an, uh, I use Crank Nicholson, so a Crank Nicholson time integrator. Um, and this is my flux boundary condition applied to the wall, so that's tagged as two. Um, so that's the weak form. And uh, the crack equals in time integration, you know, it's okay, but in certain problems, in certain cardiovascular mass transfer problems, especially when you go to thin boundary layer settings, you could you know get divergence by doing crack Nicholson. So in that those cases we found that the generalized alpha method, the generalized alpha time integration method seems to be much more robust. So 
in the next tutorial, I will, I, I will show you how you can uh, use that. Uh, okay. Then uh, we move on. We also have our stabilization added and um, we set our solvers. In this case, we're using bi-conjugate uh, stab solver. Uh, we go to our time loop here. So it, this is our time loop. We read the velocities and we interpolate between the two velocity files. So at every time instance, we do two velocity files from the input velocity, depending on what time step we're at, we interpolate, send that to the weak form and solve the problem. And also at, we inter, print some intermediate uh, information. Okay. So now let's take a look at the results we get from this one. Uh, so this is the concentration pattern in the craft artery. Um, so I ran this again, this is for a ramped up diffusion coefficient and also I didn't run it long enough, but still I can see the qualitative features that happen here. So this line that you see that you have high surface concentration at the wall, this turns out that it's not random. So in a series of papers, we talk about this in the context of wall stress topology, which we introduced. And so in this paper, for example, we talk, we shall provide a link to, we'll talk about why this pattern happens like that. And it turns out that in, we have an attracting wall stress LCS. So this is the same crowded model, this patient seven here. And this blue line you're seeing is what's called an attracting wall stress Lagrangian coherence structures. It attracts the vector fields, the time average wall stress vector fields around it, and therefore, it sends, it's, what happens is that if you view Walsh stress as near wall velocity, you can think about all the chemicals being attracted towards this line, which is why you see this line showing up as high surface concentration. Okay, so we talk more about this uh, in this uh, paper. Um, okay, great, thank you.